This is Lori Frary, and welcome to Pressure Valve. No long intros, just long content. Hi, everybody. I decided for a change to jump in there and just make a recording of just me talking and sharing some ideas and some thoughts randomly touching on some subjects. I'm glad you joined me. This is going to be a little different format for me since I'm used to having a conversational type recording with someone else. So this time it's just me. So bear with me. Um, I want to talk about mostly right now the metaverse concept that has recently, you know, hit everywhere because it's Facebook, Zuckerberg, Zuckerborg driven. I'm gonna just start off with some quotes that I've been reading and then do some background and hopefully it will give you the impetus to maybe kind of choke back that fear concept just a little bit and continue to share information and wake people up because I really feel like this is a yet another slow moving process. The reason why I say that is because every other process that they've pulled on us over the decades has been done in a real slow rollout type of method. Some of these programs take years and some take decades. I don't really think that you need to, you know, be ready to sit down and blow your brains out over all of this because it's, there's time. There's always time. Now, they've described the metaverse as, quote, you will be able to teleport instantly as a hologram to be at the office without a commute, at a concert with friends, or in your parents' living room to catch up. You're going to really feel like you're there with other people. You'll see their facial expressions or body language, close quote, Zuckerberg said. So what if the life you have now is being systematically destroyed in order to drive you into the metaverse virtual reality? The more agitated that you get, the more likely you are to want to escape into a world you can control, right? Because fighting it is just too much like work. I believe that's the process that they're using. um, And that is a very slow rollout even though it seems really expedited over the last couple of years since the pandemic started. When you think about how far we are away, especially technology-wise, from getting to the point where we're going to be all going to be hooked into the metaverse, there, like I said, there's time. If you think about how far ago, how long ago it was from Agenda 21, the inception of that. And I will read again, United Nations Conference on Environment and Development, unsaid, 1992, Agenda 21 is a comprehensive plan of action to be taken globally, nationally, and locally by organizations of the United Nations system, governments, and major groups in every area in which humans impacts on the environment. Agenda 21, the Rio Declaration on Environment and Development, and the Statement of Principles for the Sustainable Management of Forests were adopted by more than 178 governments at the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development, again called UNCED, U-N-C-E-D, held in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, 3rd to the 14th of June, 1992. Now, think about how long ago that was. The Commission on Sustainable Development, CSD, was created in December 1992 to ensure effective follow-up of UNSAID to monitor and report on implementation of the agreements at the local, national, regional, and international levels. It was agreed that a five-year review of Earth Summit progress would be made in 1997 by the United Nations General Assembly meeting in special session. The full implementation of Agenda 21, the program for further implementation of Agenda 21, and the commitments to the Rio Principles were strongly reaffirmed at the World Summit on Sustainable Development, 
WSSD held in Johannesburg, South Africa from the 26th of August to the 4th of September 2002. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development with the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, at its core was adopted by member states of the United Nations in September of 2015. So say it's 2014 and you've had this idea for a technocratic technocratic great reset of the world economy for some time now, but it only works if the entire planet, tongue in cheek, is rocked by a pandemic. How do you go about selling your idea? So in May of 2018, the World Economic Forum partnered partnered with Johns Hopkins to simulate a fictitious pandemic dubbed Clade-X, C-L-A-D-E-X. If you don't know about that, look it up to see how prepared the world would be if ever faced with such a crisis. The Clade-X exercise, the Johns Hopkins Center for Health Security, hosted the Clade-X pandemic tabletop exercise on May 15, 2018, in Washington, D.C. The purpose of the exercise was to illustrate high-level strategic decisions and policies that the United States and the world will need to pursue in order to prevent a pandemic or diminish its consequences should prevention fail. A little over a year later, the World Economic Forum once again teamed up with Johns Hopkins along with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to stage another pandemic exercise called Event 201 in October of 2019. Quote, the pandemic represents a a rare but narrow window of opportunity to reflect, reimagine, and reset our world to create a healthier, more equitable, and more prosperous future. Close quote, Klaus Schwab, World Economic Forum. If you are... The World Economic Forum founder Klaus Schwab, you attempt to sell your vision of a global utopia via a great reset of the world order in three simple steps. Number one, announce your intention to revamp every aspect of society with global governance and keep repeating that message. Number two, when your message isn't getting through, simulate a fake pandemic scenarios that show why the world needs a great reset. Number three, if the fake pandemic scenarios aren't persuasive enough, wait a couple months for a real global crisis to occur and repeat step number one. The Great Reset. It took Klaus Schwab and the Davos elite about six years to watch their Great Reset ideology grow from a tiny Swiss seed in 2014 to a European superflower pollinating the entire world in 2020. So now we come to the real agenda behind all this nonsense, and that is transhumanism, merging humans with the cloud and machine learning and managing humanity as commodities. Why go through all this work? I believe it's because of the universal law of free will. Now that's my opinion. Each step along the way was telegraphed, signed off on by country, state, and county as our representatives collectively acquiesced to these agendas. This is what democracy looks like, suckers. If people are willing to let these agendas go through over this many decades without seeing through any of these agendas, without seeing through and putting, connecting the dots, of what the end all be all of the agenda is, then I don't know what more anybody can do to help them because because of the universal law of free will, as long as they keep putting out there what their intentions are, even if they mask them as something else and cover them in layers of syrupy propaganda, they're still putting it out there. Now, yes, they do play games like putting it out there in what looks like fiction in movies and television shows and scenario books and scenarios like that so that people believe that it's fiction even though they're actually telegraphing their punch. That's an old boxing maxim. Because no one pushes back or not enough people push back, then they just keep moving forward. 
until somebody pushes back. Well, yeah, we're seeing that in a lot of different countries where, you know, Italy, lately Australia, uh, all over the place, people are pushing back, even in the United States a little bit. And what they're pushing back on is the step-by-step -step slow leak method. No, we're not going to let you do this. Or no, we're not going to let you do that. And most of the time it becomes things that affect the next generation and it's parents and families that are doing the pushing back. But if you add up all of those little pushbacks, they're still all splintered. There's this group that's against this and this group that's against that, but all the groups have not come together to say no to the whole big agenda, the big reset agenda or the big agenda 2030 agenda because they don't see the connection between the end game of complete control via transhumanism where you're going to sign away your soul so to speak in order to you know even if you want to use the biblical term buy and sell mark of the beast fine if you want to look at it from that perspective but those who really understand the biblical scripture of end times prophecy say, you know, they're all arguing. No, that's not, that's leading up to the mark of the beast. Or this is leading up to the, but it's not there yet. The actual mark of the beast will be something you can see. Something that you will be able to look at one another and be able to point to something that says that per. I don't know if it's a... If it's a chip or a tattoo or a QR co code on your forehead, I don't know what it is. But it's going to be an obvious thing that you won't have to, pro you probably won't have to even run a scanner over somebody. I guess what I'm really trying to say is we all need to continue to use whatever methods we have, whatever kind of personality or, or temperament you have, whether you use humor, whether you use memes and making fun of things or wh whatever it is, I don't think the fear method works to wake people up because they're already in fear and they're not having any <laughs> luck at determining the difference between real fear and perceived fear and they are different. The difference between fear and danger, a lot of people don't understand that difference. Fear is in your mind. Danger is imminent. Danger is, the, you know, the bear charging out of the woods coming after you, and your life is at stake right now. There is time. I don't know what the trigger will be, and I know there will be some. There will be more than one trigger. There will be different triggers for different people, to wake them up. Usually it's when uh, the real fear happens that wakes somebody up to make them, you know, actually run for their lives is when they are in absolute danger. And that's where imagine yourself in the herd and the lions have surrounded the herd and the lions are working at an effort to cut you out of the herd over here so that they can get you. Well, if you think about that, that's the kind of individual wake-up thing that happens to people. And I'll, I'll give you some examples of that. And maybe that's something that will help you determine somebody, somebody that might be, you know, open or available to, to get some quick help information and that is here's an example recently I was contacted by my insurance company that I was going my homeowner's insurance company that I was going to be canceled from my homeowner's insurance if I didn't put a new roof on my house and change my electrical panel and something else I don't remember what it was or I'm going to get canceled everybody knows that if you get canceled you have a hard time getting insurance from somebody else some other company especially at any kind of decent rate. So I'm like, well, why are they, why are they, my roof's 20 years old. Yeah. And it probably needs to be replaced soon, soon, but it's not torn or leaking or damaged. So why, why the big threat? Well, I started investigating 
and I've figured it out. This is part of the Green New Deal agenda and the Build Back Better agenda. The agenda-driven insurance companies and the banksters and all of those who work under government mandates have all decided, well, we need to start pushing people into upgrading their homes, whether they like it or not, because they're wasting energy or they're not energy efficient or their carbon carbon footprint is too big. It's just one more little insidious thing where they come in and try to take control of you or your property or your lifestyle or whatever. A lot of people can't afford to go all of a sudden doing all that stuff, you know, bringing their house up to current green build back better code. But if you investigate, you will find that it, it's, it's creeping all across the country where they're going to be able to tell you, we're going to cancel you or we won't give you a mortgage or we won't give you power because you're wasting it because you don't have enough uh, insulation in your home. Just one thing after another. And so this is that slow, insidious creep. And these are all build back better, go back farther, Agenda 21 issues that they're a little slow on getting to the punchline. So now they're pushing hard on some of these things that are a part of the reset. That's the kind of thing, if that happened to somebody who wasn't aware of all of these agendas, you know, they might be in real trouble. They'd have to sell their home. Well, then what happens? Well, they've got all of these uh, processes now where you can sell your home to Zillow or you can sell your home to Joe Blow who advertises, I'll buy your home. And they're not just stealing these homes. They're paying pretty good money for them. I mean, kind of top dollar, which is part of the reason why a lot of the real estate is going high in a lot of places. You know, everybody's concerned about the bubble and all that. Well, I just read where Zillow is planning on buying up as many houses as they possibly can. I mean, I like billion dollars worth of houses in certain areas, cities of the country. They're going into some pretty serious debt. But since it's all fiat, fake money, digital, they don't really care because their agenda is they want to own as much personal property as they possibly can. Because remember the old saying, you'll, you won't own anything, but you'll be happy. That's how they're going to achieve those kinds of agendas. In the meantime, you also can turn around and read about all the people who are going to lose their jobs if they don't get a vaccine or if they don't get a passport, you know, you know, you, I don't have to tell you all of the agendas that are going on. So, but what I do want to stipulate here there is time for us to keep working on on people and not to give up and not to withdraw i want to bring up another point that i'm seeing more and more prevalent and that is people that are consider themselves awake and aware truther types um, have already faced so much pushback from their friends and families about well they don't want to get a vaccine or you know, they're called a conspiracy theorist or whatever the case may be. And so they're sort of drawing in on themselves. They're sort of limiting their exposure to friends and family. They stay home more. They, they're they online with their groups of friends that think the way they do. And so they're sort of insulating themselves from any drama or any um, agitated friends or whatever. And they're less and less bringing up the topics of the things they used to talk about, try to get discussions going about like Flat Earth or 9-11 or any of the other conspiracies or chemtrails. I mean, you name it. There, there's all kinds of those things. And I used to do the same thing myself. I used to get, I used to get kicks out of bringing some of those things up at parties or friend's house or out to dinner with friends and I would be the one to throw it out at the table and sometimes just to see how agitated I could get everyone or just to see if they would even 
raise their eyebrows and, and listen for five minutes. And so most of all, my friends already know all of that about me. And they already are used to, oh, here she comes again with another one of her theories or another one of her agendas. But this problem of grouping and, and culting together with like-minded people is really a detriment because it's taking you out of the mainstream of people to talk about some of these things. If you do what I do, and that is really research what everything about something that you want to talk to somebody about and bring up, you want to be prepared with all of the comebacks. Like, what are they going to come back with this? And what are they going to come back with that? So you have to go look up all the talking points that the media puts out there and all of the one-liners that these people are absorbing by rote method, memory, repeat, repeat methods. And you have to be prepared to just deliver the facts and, you know, back it up. And even if you're just planting those little baby seeds, that's all you can do. And that's enough. That's, sometimes that's enough. Because if you agitate them too far, then the it's like being at the teller window at the bank. You know, there goes the teller window down and you, you got no more business today. <laughs> and that's it. You're shut out. The Great Reset is mainstream news now. And they have made it to where it's just blah, 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 and then nah, nah, Great Reset. And, and it just is like nobody's really paying that much attention to what, what they're saying. Yeah, everybody sees the creepy Klaus Schwab character. Obviously, he was he, he was the inventor of the Great Reset, the writer of the book, The Great Reset. Um, you couldn't have picked a creepier character, which makes me think that was purposeful. The idea is, is I want to just keep reminding you, look how long these agendas have been in place and how long they've been working on these things. And if it weren't for the pushback, they would be a lot farther than they are. So yes, we definitely need to keep pushing back. And yes, we definitely need to keep on our toes and watching what they're doing and, and doing our citizen reporting on what we think is going on. But you really don't have to reach very far to come up with your own, like, this is what I think is going on. Most of all of these agendas are in full print on full websites with interactive links and so on and so forth. They're not hiding anything. The only thing they're hiding is that connecting the dots of these agendas to the end game. So for I'm just going to make this a short video or audio and say what I think the end game is and how far along they are with being able to accomplish the end game. One of the last recordings that I made, I talked about nanotechnology. Yes, nanotechnology at this point is every freaking where. It's everywhere, it's in everything. It is completely inundated, almost blanketed the, the world. And this agenda has been going on in the background Yes, that one they kept kind of secret. That one they didn't talk about all over everywhere because that one they didn't want people to know about. They, they wanted to sneak that one up on everybody. That is the implementation of achieving uh, saturation of nanotechnology in, in every man, woman, and child, human being, every animal, every plant, every biological creature, every bug, everything that is biological, what we call biological in this world. But it's just like the equivalent of swallowing something inert or absorbing something inert into your skin or into your lungs by breathing or drinking or eating or, you know, whatever. Each of these nanos are inert, except for the ones that are programmed for self-assembly. They actually call it payload. It's just a payload. Only until these are activated by whatever different methods they have for activation 
just at this point right now, consider them inert. Now that's not to say don't worry about it. If you're full of nanos, you're, it doesn't matter as long as, uh, for example, you don't get a vaccine, which is one of the programming methods of making the inert nanotechnology active. Yes, there's going to be all kinds of activation going on using vaccinated people with the mRNA, blah, blah, blah. And yes, there's going to be activation using 5G, 6G. Believe it or not, there's all kinds of people out there who are saying, oh my gosh, you're saying all the words you're not supposed to say. You're going to get yourself censored. You're going to get your channel shut down. I couldn't care less. I am going to speak my mind and I'm going to say the words that they're using. If they can use them, I can use them. And I'm not saying anything that anybody probably doesn't already know or haven't already connected those dots. What I'm saying is the end game is to use the nanotechnology to activate that nanotechnology with the methods that they are right now devising and creating and innovating, and that is to connect people to the cloud. Now, the only way they're going to be able to connect people to the cloud is going to be that they have to assemble the nanos into some kind of a uh, workable uh, transmitter and transformer inside people. But I'm sure they've already, you know, down in the deep bowels of DARPA, I'm sure they've already done this with animals and plants and bugs and whatever and been able to activate this to uh, connect it to the cloud, otherwise known as the Internet of Things. The Internet of Things purpose is to connect everything into the matrix. They're going to use digital technology to connect everything. I keep it in my mind that I want to try to stay as analog as possible. Is that easy? Absolutely not. We all are hooked into everything with our phones and our computers and our tablets and our ear pods and buds and whatever else technology. Can we all just put it down one day and say, no, we're not going to do it anymore? Absolutely we can. And, and at some point, I believe a lot of people will. They'll just put it all down, turn it all off and say, I'm not going to be connected to anything. Yes, I think there will be some point in time where people will try to, you know, make their own little villages of unconnected people, the village of the Luddites or whatever, try to stay unconnected. There actually is a place, uh, can't remember where it is off the top of my head, but it's a radio free zone where there's giant antennas that they listen to space noise with. You're not allowed any radio frequencies at all within that area. And all the people who have all kinds of frequency EMF problems, uh, they try to go there, move there, stay close by there to limit the amount of radio frequency EMF, whatever. And some, a lot of them say it seems to help them that they couldn't live outside of that area if they wanted to. Back to my point of transhumanism, there is, there is an agenda that is, it's been talked about for years, but it, it always sounds real science fiction-y when people, when these guys talk about it. People like, you know, what's his name from t Tesla and Bill Gates and all these different people that are talking about transhumanism. They're putting out the little bit of fear. Oh, well, you know, it's something we're not going to be able to control, but, you know, that's the way we're headed and I don't think we're going to be able to go backwards. Well, the idea of connecting everything for the Internet of Things is can't be for any other purpose than nefarious. I mean, it's to control. There's Whether you want to use it as it's, it'll make us safer, it'll make us more peaceful, it'll make us more, you know, innovative, whatever propaganda they want to put out there about it, everybody knows that privacy will go completely out the window and everybody's everything, including, let's say, for example, you walk into a room and some world leader's picture is on the wall, they'll be able to read your breath rate, your heart rate, your your emotions probably to know whether you secretly 
hate that guy or or not break down to know that you, what you really think or what you really feel and will it go against your social credit score and so on and so on yeah all of this sounds completely horrific to most people but most people don't think we'll ever get there because why because of the very reason that I started out this video, this audio with, and that is the slow creep method. By the time you get to the end game, you're probably two generations down the road from the people who first heard it and the people who first started thinking about, well, where are they headed with this? Because now you're two generations deep into they've been raised with it they've had it as a part of their normal life their new normal uh, for m more than half their life or all of their life that's why you do the slow creep method is you, you know you don't do it so quickly that you get an immediate pushback and by the time that the other people figure out what's going on it's too late they're already in the quicksand the positive there's a positive and negative message here and, and that is, the positive message is there's still time. The negative message is they're not going to stop. They're not going, I mean, they're too all in on this game to say, oh, what the hell, what are we doing? We've changed our mind, uh, so on. Because you've got the same people who have been living very long lives who are in these Davos elite groups or these, you know, G20 leaders or whatever that are never going to stop. And they already are, have like sworn allegiance to the devil or whatever. And they're, they're all in. And they've already been given not only the benefits of com complying with it all, but they also have signed away their soul and they probably took some oath no doubt about that that they were not only going to continue with the agenda but they would that they would never tell what the end game is to anyone and, and that's why they meet in these secret groups so anyway the uh the metaverse concept will be sold as something upbeat and positive and there won't be any negatives talked about it or anything it will be you know just like i said at the beginning of talking you will be able to teleport instantly as a hologram to be at the office why do you think they shut down everything and made people work from home to get people used to that You'll be able to go and visit your parents' living room or go to your friend's house or, uh, you know, pop up at a party or a concert. All of this, to me, all this business about the yin-yang of the vax and the anti-vax fighting each other, it will come to a point where it, it won't matter anymore whether you're vaxxed or you're unvaxxed because... Those that are vaxxed are going to suffer whatever consequences of, you know, whatever's in there that's going to harm them or put them under total control or make zombies out of them or whatever the heck it is. And those that are unvaxxed already have nanos in them. I already know I have them in me. I know they're in the plants outside. I know they're everywhere. They're in the air. They're everywhere. They're in the water. They're in the food. They're in your clothing, for crying out loud. And so, yes, am I going to remain cognizant of, of preventing any upgrade or a program update or whatever? I, yeah, I'm going to try my best not to let them put their agenda off on me. But at the same time, um, you can imagine every day, the life that you have is systematically being destroyed in order to drive you into the metaverse virtual reality. I mean, most of us are on virtual reality when we go just on social media or Facebook or whatever. Just one time, go 
go click on a TikTok video that someone sent you. And before you know it, you're scrolling down to the next one and the next one and the next one and ha 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 and laughing your ass off at some stupid crap. And you go, oh my God, it just burned up 10 or 15 minutes totally sucked into TikTok. And you just have to just slap yourself and just hit the X and turn it off and because it's so addicting. And it's the same way with social media. Most of us got in social media like Facebook uh, pr probably a decade or more ago. And it was so much different back then than it is today that we're, it's like, it's like sitting down to Thanksgiving dinner with this big plate of food. The first bite of turkey. Oh my God, that's so good. The first bite of green bean casserole or stuffing or whatever. It's nice and it's hot and it's steamy and it's flavorful and it's wonderful and you just keep eating. And pretty soon the whole plate of food has now gone cold and congealed and the, pea, the peas got little dents in them and everything is looking awful, but you're still eating based on the memory of the first few bites. And that is exactly what happens with Facebook and with Twitter and, and any of these other social media platforms by design. They're designed to do that, to keep you on there as many hours of the day as they possibly can. Don't you want us to send the notifications to your phone? Don't you want us to let you know when somebody liked your post? Don't you want that? And, and yet, everybody complains that Man, I used to get 100 likes on something, even if it was a cat, goofy cat picture. And now I only get three or four if I'm lucky. Am I being shadow banned? No, dumbass. Everybody's being shadow banned. I mean, that's how it works. They want you to stay there so you can get to those 10 or 20 or 50 likes or the comments. Why do you think they started birthdays? Oh, celebrate your birthday. And when your birthday comes along and you got 50 or if you don't have 100 of your friends wishing you happy birthday, you know, you're upset. Well, I took my birthday off of Facebook probably 10 years ago and nobody ever wishes me happy birthday. And I don't wish anybody happy birthday because I don't do birthdays. And if I wish you happy birthday, but I didn't wish Sally happy birthday, then, you know, and I don't hardly know Sally, but I know you then you're going to be upset if I, I mean, it's a whole, like, just this big sucking giant vacuum of time sucking. That's what the virtual metaverse is going to be like. It's just going to be one giant time sucking thing. And you will go on there as many times a day as you possibly have time for. People will lose their jobs over being in the metaverse. People will lose spouses for being in the metaverse. People will let their own home life go slovenly and their parents go slovenly. <laughs> and, but in the metaverse, they'll have this very cool looking avatar and it'll have really cool virtual, you know, Nike shoes and go to the beauty parlor and get the coolest avatar hairdo you can get and clothes buying at the NFT store. NFTs are non-fungible tokens, which is a digital version of whatever's in the real world. So basically, they're making the matrix. <laughs> they are making the matrix. And you think you're already in the matrix? You ain't seen nothing yet. But I, I'm thinking, I might be wrong, but I think we got three to five years before this happens. And I'm hoping to that enough people wake up to it that it becomes one big stinking pile of flop before it ever happens. Now, there will be those who will do it no matter what. And you will lose friends and you'll lose family and cousins and neighbors that will be stuck in the metaverse for hours and hours of the day. And... Wait until it turns into the movie The Surrogates and uh, and the actual Matrix. So, yeah, if, if, if they're allowed to make this thing happen and if it were anybody other than Zuckerberg, I might think, nah, 
it doesn't have a very good chance of really becoming totally mainstream. But since I think the CIA has owned Facebook either from the beginning or from very close to the beginning, and the DARPA and the military industrial complex and the NSA all got their fingers in Facebook and all social media, then all of those guys who are who are the ones who are going to push this thing forward and they're going to expedite it as fast as possible. So just like with something like um, cryptocurrency, for example, cryptocurrency has been around long enough now that everybody's heard of it, but not everybody owns any and not everybody has educated themselves about cryptocurrency and blockchain. But now suddenly, Every, all the countries, they're going to make their own central bank digital currency, CBDCs, and they're all arguing about which will be the, you know, worldwide exchange token and yada, yada, yada. And you got the BIS and the IMF and World Bank and the whole, all the players are in it now. Well, yeah, you can ask yourself the question. Did they start it, but make it look like they didn't? Made it look like it came out of, you know, Satoshi Nakamoto, whoever, you know, hidden person, which is would be a classic way to start cryptocurrency, would, would be to make it look like it came anonymously from out of the blue somewhere. But regardless of where it came from and who started it, it has now all been co-opted. It's all been modified to the point where, yes, they're going to, you know, use it for, they're going to use it for the metaverse. They're going to use it for the new matrix coming. I mean, you can't get any more, any closer to the matrix than the metaverse. You can't, I mean, with, they might as well have just called it the matrix for, you know, for heaven's sake, because it, it is what it is. The whole idea, and, and I said this, oh man, two years ago, was the digitizing everything. It's at least been two years ago, maybe three years ago. They're digitizing everything. They're converting everything analog to digital. And once something goes analog to digital, it doesn't come back. So what they're doing is they're making a secondary platform, uh, a, a mock-up image of life, the universe, and everything in digital form. And you and I both know that we already have an avatar that's, that they've created for us, that, that, that avatar has been, they've been dumping our metadata into that avatar for years now, you may not know it, but you have a, a, a holographic you already in the metaverse that they've already created. They're just now telling people about it. And, and this is the way they're going to tell them. And they're going to make it sound all gamified and all that stuff so that you don't get creeped out about it. Once the world, once the second layer of the world, the digitized version becomes the primary version that people are in, people are associating in, then God's creation, the analog, biological analog, supernatural construct version will become less and less important and less and less valuable to everyone because the value will be put in the metaverse and the matrix. And you, you, you will operate your life in the metaverse, in the matrix. And there will be those of us, I mean, just think about the movie, The Matrix, in the beginning, uh, you know, where Neo comes out of the matrix and he's sitting there with Morpheus and they're sitting in these two nasty looking old chairs out in the middle of this dark, dreary world that basically has been destroyed by the machines. And that's the world of the real and the matrix is the world that everybody's in well will you want to go back to that world will you i mean doesn't it sound like the kind of thing where you know that's why they're talking about 
all this sustainability. It's all your fault. All you humans, you're using everything. You're burning through all the resources. The world is going to be destroyed if you don't stop, if we don't stop you. So instead of going backwards <laughs> and going, okay, maybe it's the tech and the modernization and the industrial complex that has made us destroy the world, or maybe, you know, we, instead of going into this digital matrix world, we should stop this direction completely and go back. It, it's really okay to go back. I mean, how many times have you been driving around and lo gotten lost and you go, okay, if I can just find my way back to here, then I can start again and I think I can find it. Well, that's how I look at where we are right now is the whole world is going in the wrong direction. And this is not a direction that a whole lot of us would have chosen to go in. But because they play it out as, well, all of your 170 countries all uh, agreed to the Agenda 21 and the Agenda 30 and the CSD and all of that, you, your your leaders, your representatives are all on board and they think this is a good idea and they all of these catchwords that you're hearing are all part of leading to the end game of the metaverse, the transhumanism, the internet of things, the connect connecting everything using nanotechnology, electromagnetic frequencies, 5G, 6G, who knows? They may have 12G by the time they hook it all in because they're going to need it for speed. This is the thing that we have to make fun of. I don't know many other ways. Call somebody out on something. If you use fear, people just think of you as a fraidy cat and you don't know what, you know, you don't know what, why you're afraid. But if you use humor and satire, and show people what it'll be like. I mean, think about the movie WALL-E, where you got all these giant, fat, obese people sitting in the chairs hooked up uh, to their world in a, in a spaceship ho hovering above Earth, waiting for the signal for them to be able to come back to Earth. Well, WALL-E, all those guys, hooked, all those people hooked into the just eating, laying, Farting machines are all, are all us in the future if we don't stop this. And that's why I say if you, use, if you make fun of something, everybody wants to be cool. That's kind of a human thing. Everybody wants to be cool. They want to be accepted. They want to be part of the gang and so on. So the more you make fun of something that... Uh, some geeky people might think is a cool thing, like the metaverse. Oh, I can't wait for the metaverse, especially the younger generation, the youngest generation. I hate to date myself by calling people a younger generation because I was there once myself. So the idea is, is these guys have all been brought up with it. I mean, I wasn't brought up with video games and virtual reality. I learned it all as as it came into play, the internet and, and all of it. And um, and I've seen where it's going for a very long time, but they they were born with it. They might as well have been born with little ear pods in and, and a phone in their hand. So they're not definitely not interested in going backwards. They they would find nothing nothing glamorous or interesting about going back to having to grow your own food or having to hoe the garden for your grandma or having to go gather eggs in the chicken coop or any of the other rural stuff, milking cows and blah, blah. And they're not interested in going to work in the factory or, or whatever like that. They don't get their hands dirty with any of that kind of nonsense. So they're totally all in on the fourth industrial revolution. The fourth industrial revolution is all completely digital. That's what it means. That's what it's going to be. Take a pencil and a piece of paper and write the number four and then write the letter I and then write the letter R in caps. 
for I are. Write that down and look at it and look at it. And if that doesn't look like air to you, then you're not seeing it right because that's what the fourth industrial revolution is. It's everything over the airways. It's everything digital and frequencies and all that. It's, it's not going to be anything biological about it. If you watch the old movie Surrogates, everybody sits in their chair and hooks themselves to a machine and they have a robot surrogate out in the world that they are controlling. It's not a hologram surrogate. It's a it's a robot surrogate taking their life for them, do, doing their daily life for them. And all the while they're they're in a bed in a ch hooked up to a machine and they're feeling everything, they're, you know, sensing everything, so on and so on. And in the movie there's a surrogate free zone where no surrogates are allowed by treaty. These guys don't want any robots in their world. And they live in a, they always make the non-agenda world look dark and bleak and terrible and, you know, like dirty and tainted looking water and food and housing and everything, of course, to make it look like this is not where the side you want to be on. All of these kinds of movies are are all couching these ideas in fiction, sci-fi fiction, so that you will be entertained by it. At the same time, you'll be normalized to it, but it is not giving you a prediction of the future. It's just a movie. It's just a plot. But then if you look at who is producing these movies, then you go, oh, okay, now it's a little better, easier to see that this is part of the agenda. And, you know, most of people who are listening to me right now, who, who have listened to me for any length of time, already know everything I'm talking about. The only reason why I'm reiterating some of it and connecting some dots that maybe some people hadn't reconnected, you know, maybe you thought about it at one time, but then you put it out of your mind because everything's moved forward. You have to keep going back with the dots and you have to keep going back with the agenda. And so if you, you know, I started this out with 1992 with, with Agenda 21. You think about how long ago that's been. And that, and that this agenda has been, you know, re-stamped. They meet again every so many years. And they go, yep, this is the agenda we're still on. This is, yep, we're just going to, you know, a, adapt this a little bit or add some more stuff to it. Well, then along comes the World Economic Forum and it was basically their job, their agenda to put the agenda into the most modern daytime thing they could. I mean, after all, it was Klaus Schwab who came up with the fourth, fourth Industrial Revolution moniker, air. We're all just gonna be living in air, in the cloud. Think about it. That's the agenda. If it were, if if I were you, if I had some advice to give, I would say, make as much fun of this metaverse idea as you possibly can, and make it sound so bleak that if it's the equivalent of the way we make fun of fact checkers, screwball goober sitting in grandma's basement uh, doing fact checking all day because he's got no other life. That's the person who, those are the first people that are gonna be in the metaverse. Once you sign into that whole thing, you basically are signing into the, the, the beast system for good. Because I can't imagine very many people coming back out of the metaverse. And I kind of feel like they'll make sure you don't. That once you get hooked into the whole thing, whatever, terms and agreement <laughs> crap you're going to sign uh, you're not even going to read because nobody ever does it's it's going to give them permission to basically enter your brain to basically enter your body with the nanotech that is already in there you're basically giving them permission to take you over and to own you 
And that's why they say you won't own anything and you'll be happy. And when they say anything, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy, they mean nothing, not even yourself. This is early with the metaverse thing yet and we have time to wreck it. But if you remember back a few years ago, all the talk was about 5G. Everybody was freaking out about 5G. I can remember almost down to the minute when the pandemic was announced that no more talk of 5G happened. I mean, nobody talks about Everything was all about 5G. Not only from the truthers, but from Trump. Yeah, we need 5G. As a matter of fact, we need 6G. I'll, I'll never forget hearing him say it. And I was like, oh my God, man, what are you saying? It was one of the first times when I was absolutely certain that he was in on their game and, and part of their game. He was no renegade. Yeah, he did some renegade things, but he was all in with the Vax and with the 5G and the 6G and the Space Force and all of that stuff. And that's the only politics I'm going to talk about him but for those of you out there who believe, who still believe that he's going to come and save the day, it's time. It's really time to give up on that thought because that is that is not going to happen. If it does, you can come back to me and and bop, boot me in the nose or bop me upside the head and say I told you so. But I have zero fear of that happening. Absolutely zero. So. We're going to have to save ourselves just like we always have throughout history. And if we're not going to save ourselves, then pray to your maker that you will be saved. Because this thing is going to come, but it's not going to come overnight. So don't get completely pumped out with this thing and, and get, you know, like, oh my God, I, 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 I shake my head, I give up. Might as well just be like, well, I don't even remember what the one guy's name was that was in the Matrix who decided to go back after he had the nice steak dinner or whatever that whole story was and eating the glop and everything else. He decided he wanted to go back. Well, there will be people who will give up and just say, forget it. You know, what's the point? But those people don't have belief in a higher power. Most of them, probably none of them have belief in a higher power or an intervention, uh, a supernatural intervention, or a reset by God versus a reset by Satan, or whatever. That's a wrap for me on this on this talk, on this idea. Uh, I just wanted to touch base about you know something that is as impactful as the metaverse and the transhumanism and the future of humanity being taken over and basically basically put in pods just like the matrix movie and you're going to be run by by uh it's not artificial intelligence really yet it's not it's really not quite there yet i mean i'm sure they've developed some artificial intelligence, but it, you know, they all admit that it's really just advanced machine learning. Artificial intelligence is achieved when they have singularity and there, nobody's announced any singularity. And I would have to venture to say that that is such a big deal that it would be announced if, if someone had achieved singularity and actual true artificial intelligence. So don't get that confused with advanced machine learning because that's pretty much as far as we are. Now, maybe in the depths of DARPA, they have achieved singularity, but I I, I, I don't feel that yet. I think, I feel, I feel like the world would feel it. They, they would know that there was an intelligence that had merged with human, all human emotions and in human understanding and, and all of that. And I just feel like the creator of this universe is not going to let that happen. And I believe that we have probably gotten close to that level before in, with humanity. And uh, this earth was reset before. 
and all you have to do is look at the earth and say this 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 is not the first time around for this place and and i don't mean as in recreated i just mean as in reset so i can do a whole talk for hours and hours on what that means and that won't be today so Thank you for joining me and for listening and for all of the very nice messages that I get from people who poke and prod me to talk about things that come back and do another podcast. Uh, you know who you are and uh, I need it and I appreciate it that if I didn't have you guys prodding me, I probably would just keep all of this to myself because it's just easier. So good day, good night. Thanks again for listening, and this is Lori signing off. Bye now.